What's up guys? I hope you had a great week. I hope you're staying strong, staying focused during this never ending quarantine. So if you're like me, you may have noticed that your alcoholic drink count has slowly creeped up and that's okay. This is stressful times and nothing helps me relax more than a nice refreshing cocktail. I'm here to show you how you can create low carb alcoholic drinks at home. These cocktails are straightforward, simple, and can be adapted to your own palate. Now, if you're ever out with your friends in public and you start asking for low carb or sugar-free cocktails, your friends are gonna give you the side eye like you just committed murder. So let's talk about why you should be knowledgeable regarding your alcoholic drinks. You might know calories come from three main macronutrients, proteins, carbs, and fats. There's also a fourth less talked about macronutrient and that's alcohol. The reason we don't talk about this one is because it's not essential for our body to function. So when your body breaks down alcohol, it releases seven calories per gram of that alcohol compared to carbohydrates and protein, which releases four, and fat that releases nine calories. Now, if you're counting your macros, alcohol should 100% be counted in your total caloric intake. What many people do is they calculate the amount of calories in their alcoholic drink and they subtract it from their total carbohydrate allowance for that day. But if you're like me and you're in ketosis, then your goal should be to minimize the amount of alcohol that you do intake. Alcohol does not kick you out of ketosis, but it does pause ketosis. If you're in a ketogenic state, then your body is relying on fat for fuel. Fat is broken down in your body in the liver. Now, when you consume alcohol, alcohol is also broken down by your liver. So when you do ingest alcohol, you're not kicked out of ketosis, it's just put on pause. Since your body views alcohol as a toxin, it's gonna prioritize metabolizing that before any other fat. Once your body is finished breaking down that alcohol, it will jump right back into that ketogenic state. Now, if you're consuming drinks like beer or red wine that has a lot of other additional carbohydrates in there, then your body will be kicked out of ketosis. So for today's video, I'm gonna talk about spirits, hard alcohol, and how you can use them to create delicious cocktails that aren't gonna kick you out of ketosis for a long time. So enough of the science, this is the alcohol episode. Let's get right to it. This is Coach Sean's Kitchen. So to make these recipes, I highly suggest that you get yourself a bar set. If you go to a big department store, buying all of these pieces is probably gonna run you about $40. I bought mine at a restaurant supply store and I believe I spent less than $6. So the equipment I'm using today is a Boston shaker, a jig for measuring, a muddler, and a strainer. So if you haven't subscribed already, it would really help me out if you did. Since I am a new YouTube channel, it is really hard to break into this space and every subscription helps. And while you're there, go ahead and give this video a like and turn on notifications so you can be notified anytime a new Coach Sean's Kitchen video is released. So to kick off our low carb cocktails, we're going to begin with the Whiskey Smash. This is a great drink. It's so refreshing on a hot summer day. So this cocktail is comprised of whiskey, lemon, stevia, and my favorite summer herb, mint. So into our shaker, we're gonna add one lemon quartered along with some stevia. We're gonna rely on stevia in many of these cocktails to bring some sweetness to our drinks. So once it's all in our shaker, we're gonna go ahead and begin muddling. So the goal of muddling is to release all the essential oils from that lemon and the mint leaves. Once done, we're gonna go ahead and add our whiskey. Today, I'm using Stumpy's Old Monroe Whiskey. I talked to the guy at the liquor store and he recommended it because it tasted great and it's locally made. A win-win. So once everything is in our shaker, we're gonna go ahead and add some ice and we're gonna begin stirring. So the rule of thumb I like to use when shaking or stirring a cocktail is I'm gonna keep going until this metal cup is too cold to hold. Once you've reached that point, you've done a really good job of mixing the ingredients. So finally, we'll strain our cocktail over some crushed ice, we'll spank our mint, garnish because we fancy, and bam, you have yourself a refreshing whiskey smash, a great low carb cocktail. The next low carb drink we're going to make is a gin and tonic. 
and I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. So if you've ever looked at the ingredients in tonic water, it's basically carbonated water and high fructose corn syrup. We can do better. So I'm gonna be using some club soda today and some stevia. Using both of these together, you'll never know the difference. So first up, we're gonna cut off a wheel of our lime for garnish, and then the recipe couldn't be any more simple. We're gonna measure out our gin into our cup, we'll add some stevia, and then we'll top as much soda water as you want in your drink. And bam, you have yourself a gin and tonic. So I'm gonna post the ratio of what I like to make in my cocktails, but you need to find what works for you. Some people like their drinks sweeter, some people like them more tart, maybe you like bubbles, maybe you don't. So you need to find what works for you. Next up, we have my favorite cocktail, the Old Fashioned. I am such a whiskey guy, and this cocktail is just the purest expression of that. Today, I'm using these chocolate Aztec bitters because I'm going after a dessert-style cocktail. So the procedure for this cocktail is we're gonna start off with stevia, and then I'm gonna hit it with a few bitters. Then I'm gonna put in one large ice cube. The idea here is one large cube has a lot less surface area than a bunch of small little ice cubes. So it's going to melt slower and it's not gonna water down our drink. Then I'm gonna take some more of that Stumpy's whiskey and I'm going to pour it over that ice cube. Traditionally an old fashioned is garnished. Since I've got the chocolate bitters going, I thought what would be a great addition to that? Some orange. So I'm gonna garnish with some peel. So give it a squeeze, run it around the outside and you have an amazing, no sugar, old fashioned. So the last cocktail we're gonna make is a margarita. And the main ingredient here is going to be limes and lots of it. We're gonna use our limes in two different ways. The first thing I'm gonna do is take one of my limes and I'm gonna quarter it up and put it into my shaker. Then I'm gonna juice only half a lime. So the idea here is if you juice the number of limes you needed for the amount of lime flavor you wanted, this drink would be so acidic. So by muddling some of the limes in here, we're gonna release that lime essential oil flavor without adding a bunch of additional acidity. So once that's all in, we're gonna add a good amount of stevia, some tequila, and some ice. Then we're gonna go ahead and stir until our glass is too cold to hold. Then we'll strain it into our fanciest glass, and then we'll top it with a little bit of soda water. The bubbles and the carbonation help add body and balance out the acidity of the drink. And there you go. You have a margarita that I will take over one of those sugary pre-made mixes any day. So I hope I inspired you to branch out and try to make some cocktails at home. And if you do go out to a bar, ask a bartender to work with you. Most are more than willing to really flex their creative muscles to create a low carb sugar free cocktail that you'll enjoy. Let me know in the comments which drink you're most excited to try. For me, it has to be that chocolate old fashioned. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Cook Sean's Kitchen. And as always, you can make anything homemade and healthy.